We're perfectly on time now to introduce Andrea Horvath. Uh, so I'm delighted to call on Andrea, MPP for Hamilton Centre and leader of the official opposition and the Ontario New Democratic Party to bring greetings. She's a leader who believes in proposing positive solutions, especially when it comes to ending hallway health care and giving seniors better care. She's an Ontarian, a mom, a Hamiltonian, and she's running for premier in 2022. Andrea is a longtime friend of RNAO and a regular participant in RNAO's AGM, and that's much appreciated. I'm pleased to welcome MPP Andrea Horvath, leader of the official opposition and leader of the Ontario New Democratic Party. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Morgan, for that wonderful introduction. And it's just so great to be here. Before I get into my formal remarks, though, I, I think it's important to just off the top uh, acknowledge the horrifying news of the uh, unmarked graves of uh, of uh, over 700 children, 751 children uh, in uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, it is um, something that I think we are going to have to continue to uh, face for weeks and months to come. And uh, I think it's really important to acknowledge that uh, what's happened here in our country uh, is absolutely a uh, uh, an act of genocide, uh, a crime against humanity, and all of those children uh, who we've um, found the remains of thus far and who we will continue to find the remains of are, uh, are people that should, be, uh, should have been able to live a full life, that should have been able uh, to fulfill their dreams, uh, lead a full life, uh, and have um, their children and grandchildren following um, or, or, or continuing with their uh, their legacy uh, today, and it's uh, it's absolutely horrifying what um, what First Nations and Indigenous communities are going through right now. And I think we all just need to be really thoughtful uh, about that, um, and not only you know utter the words necessary uh, to 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 support and uh, uh, and uh, and connect with them, but also acknowledge that there are actions that need to take place. We all know what's happening on our reserves uh, in Ontario. There's no secret about that. There has been a lot of activism over the years to try to get clean drinking water uh, and clean water period uh, for First Nations communities, many uh, of whom still do not have that access. We know the housing crisis exists uh, in terms of overcrowding, in terms of lack of quality, in terms of mold. Uh, we know what's happening in our, in our uh, uh, child welfare system in, in terms of the over-representation -rep of Indigenous children, really the, the carrying on uh, to this day of the re residential school system, because let's face it, uh, there are more kids right now in care in Ontario than, uh, than there were in the residential schools. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and I think that it, it behooves us to acknowledge where we are at this point in history uh, and deal with the inequities around education, around healthcare. Uh, around housing, the treaty uh, rights that have not been honored. Um, it is now is the time for, for Canada and for Ontario uh, to step up and, and start um, start implementing the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, so on that note, it, it's been a it's been a rough day. It's been a rough uh, couple of weeks here in Ontario. I mean, let's not let's face it. We we've also seen the horrifying terrorist attack on the Muslim family in London. I was in London just yesterday. In fact, I left London this morning. Um, it's, it's a somber, somber um, space right now in London. The community came out obviously in, in droves to support uh, the, the Muslim community, but there's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of fear and a lot of anger and rightfully so. We have rising hate uh, in, our, in our province, in our country, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Black racism, anti-Asian racism, um, anti-Semitism, it, it's, it, it's got to stop. Um, and it won't stop until we take responsibility for rooting out uh, the systemic racism that exists in our communities and in our, in our systems, uh, in, our, um, you know, in our organizations and in our ministries and in our, uh, our programs and our services. It, we have to take this seriously. We can do so much better than we are. And uh, to see 
you know, to see the pain and the anguish and the, the fear and the anger in London over these last couple of days that to remains uh, following that attack is, uh, it was, it was quite, it was quite a, it was quite an experience, I have to say. And it only motivates me more to say we can find those solutions. We absolutely can make those changes uh, and, and we can uh, do everything that uh, is possible to stamp out hate uh, and racism uh, and, uh, and, and, as a party, New Democrats have always had those values and we are going to continue to have those value, uh, values and look forward to forming government next year so that we can actually implement the change that needs to happen, uh, that should have happened long ago uh, and that, uh, that absolutely needs to happen. Uh, when it comes to where we are now and all of you wonderful members of RNAO, and I want to say uh, thank you to, um, uh, to Doris um, for all the work over so many years that she's put into the organization, to your board, to all of your members, you have done amazing work forever here in Ontario, but certainly in the wake of COVID-19, uh, you stepped up, you stepped up and you put superhuman effort uh, into the frontline work, uh, into, uh, uh, into facing the challenges and fighting against COVID-19 and, and really working hard to uh, uh, to make sure that people uh, in Ontario could get through this uh, this COVID crisis with the best and most attentive care possible, oftentimes at your own personal risk. Uh, we know, um, and it's something that I've said many times and I will continue to say, and I think many reports and analyses that have been undertaken uh, clearly indicate uh, that the government didn't make the investments necessary to save uh, to save 4,000 lives in long-term care. Uh, they didn't make the investment, investments necessary to, you know, to keep those dreams alive of, uh, of uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs. They, uh, you know, they didn't do what was necessary to keep our schools open and our kids healthy and well. Um, and, and so there's a lot of reckoning that needs to happen around all of that. Uh, but we know that the, the, the COVID, the COVID virus is still amongst us. We know that there are still variants that are, uh, that are uh, you know, something that we need to keep an eye on. Um, but we also know that, uh, that the aftermath uh, is something that we have to address. Uh, and whether that's the growing, uh, uh, the continuing growing uh, procedural and surgical backlogs and diagnostic backlogs that exist, uh, it's it's a big problem and we have to address it and, and funding, um, you know, the uh, uh, the effort to reduce uh, those uh, backlogs is uh, is not adequate. It's less than half of what uh, the financial accountability officer has identified that the Ford government should be spending. Uh, and, and it's shocking that here we are and the government keeps, you know, coming up with these ideas and these kind of suggestions that they might uh, utilized to try to address the backlog. Other provinces started to address the backlog back in uh, the summer of last year. Uh, you know, BC, for example, uh, went into the third wave with 95% of their backlog in surgical and procedural uh, um, uh, patients uh, that were waiting. 95% had been cleared by the time the third wave was upon us. That's not the case in Ontario. And, and it's going to take you, it's going to take your you and your colleagues and your, 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 the members of RNAO and, and all of the other health professions uh, to, to help address that. But it can't be done without a plan uh, and it can't be done without uh, the funding, uh, adequate funding of, of such a plan. So we're, we're certainly keeping our eye on that. We know that you've been ringing the alarm bells, RNAO has for some time um, around, uh, around nurses, uh, uh, RPNs and uh, RNs leaving the field and retiring and leaving the field and that that's uh, that's growing uh, to be worse of a concern uh, than it has been in the past and it's been a, a concern for some time uh, there were I think 20,000 uh, nurse uh, nurses uh, short uh, in terms of what we needed here in Ontario just to meet the needs uh, in uh, in regular times if you will uh, pre-COVID but um, you know this coming wave of early retirements post pandemic, as well as the regular retirements that were expected, it's it's a challenge that we have to you know we have to seriously address. And I don't see the government coming up with a plan in that regard. Uh, I also want to thank the RNAO because really 
when it comes to one of the other big public health or big health crises that we're, we're also struggling with, uh, the opioid crisis, uh, you folks have been there. You've been there uh, for a while now, uh, sounding the alarm bells, identifying uh, the, uh, the crisis that we're in. Uh, you, you all know more than I do. You all know the statistics and the, uh, the concerns of the growing opioid crisis, some 60% more deaths lost to uh, uh, overdoses uh, over the 2019 statistics. That's, that's frightening. And I, I, can, I, I can just let you know that one of the things that I heard recently, um, you know, in the last number of months, I've been calling, uh, you know, mayors and different uh, municipal leaders just to just check in and touch base to see how they were coping. Uh, and I, I can tell you that communities across the province, and you know this as well, uh, are identifying the opioid crisis as, uh, as the number one concern facing their communities. Uh, and I know you've been there, as I said, for some time. Uh, we, need to, we need to really address uh, what's happening in our communities. And, and it's happening in big cities. It's happening in small towns. It's happening in rural Ontario, northern Ontario. Uh, it's, uh, it is a crisis that is massive and uh, people are losing their lives because we have not, uh, we have not done right by uh, those folks who are facing uh, mental health and addictions challenges. We need much, much more attention uh, to those folks and, and to the trauma uh, that they've experienced over time and they're trying to address uh, with, their, uh, with their addictions. Um, there's just no doubt that, that you yourselves have gone through a lot as, uh, as people on the front lines of COVID. And I, I just, I wanna, you know, everybody says we have to thank the frontline workers. We absolutely do. But I think it's important to acknowledge, you know, the trauma that many of you and your colleagues have faced throughout this pandemic, uh, you know, losing patients, losing family members, losing colleagues uh, to COVID-19. It has been it has been horrifying. And all the while uh, you have been running at full tilt uh, and you have been asked to do things uh, uh, that, um, you know, that that were putting your own lives at risk. You've been asked to work in 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 areas uh, and in, uh, uh, in roles that maybe weren't, you know, weren't where you were accustomed to working. Um, it's been, it's been, it's been brutal. And I just want to say that I acknowledge and recognize that. Um, it's, it's quite a moment in time that we're in right now uh, here in Ontario. Uh, and uh, if there's anything at all that you identify uh, that, uh, that we can do as the official opposition that I can do as the leader of a political party, but also as an Ontarian uh, to help you with your self-care, uh, to help you and your colleagues uh, with, uh, you know, with, uh, with your own well-being, please, please let us know. Uh, because I think that's something that, um, that's often missed is the, uh, you know, the acknowledgement, the recognition and the, the commitment to, uh, to helping uh, helping you, uh, be, you know, in the wake of everything you've done to help the rest of Ontario. Uh, I, I guess I, I, I guess I have to say that I really think that you deserve to have a government that has your back. And I don't think that that's what we've seen uh, in the last 15 or 16 months. Uh, and even prior to that, uh, it's, it's been a government that's uh, been reticent to make the investments necessary uh, to make your jobs easier. Uh, and to acknowledge and recognize the important work that you do, um, you know, in, in, in terms of identifying upstream solutions uh, to uh, uh, to the um, you know to the health and well-being of Ontarians, and uh, it's something that you've been talking about for a very long time. And, and unfortunately, successive governments have not uh, have not had a commitment to uh, to making those kinds of investments. But I I want you to know uh, that uh, that we will be there with you and for you. Um, and, and we know, New Democrats know, uh, exactly what the messages are of the RNAO. And we, we value and recognize the work of your organization. It is, uh, it is, it is it's received worldwide acclaim, and rightfully so. Uh, you are absolutely, um, you know, precious in, in terms of what you bring to our province, both as, as a uh, registered nurses and uh, registered, pra registered practical nurses, but also uh, as an organization uh, in terms of the, the value that you bring. Uh, I, I think what, I, what I'd like to end with saying is it's, it's far 
uh, past the time to acknowledge and recognize that we need more investments in healthcare, in our public healthcare system, uh, not uh, more cuts, not more freezes, uh, not more ignoring of, uh, of uh, what needs to happen uh, to, um, to prevent people from becoming ill in the first place. Let's get at those uh, those upstream investments. Let's get at those root causes, uh, and let's you know let's do what we know Ontario can do uh, in terms of turning uh, the, the turning the page or changing the channel on how we address the uh, the support of people who are ill, but also the prevention uh, to pr to provide the uh, the kinds of uh, uh, investments that that help people uh, to lead uh, and live a, a life uh, that. Uh, uh, that allows them to stay well. And that's on every front. It's on housing. It's on uh, access to, uh, uh, to health care, to, to not only primary health care, but to uh, well-being care. There's just so much that we need to do. I want to say that uh, long-term care is a big piece of uh, what we see as being uh, an important uh, shift. Long-term care and home care, the investments there, the models there need to change completely. And we saw uh, you know, for, for decades now, governments not willing to make those changes, not willing to take the profits out, not willing to make the necessary investments in the context of a significant, uh, a, a significant push that's, that's necessary uh, to deal with the, the demographic changes that are coming. Uh, the aging population, I just find it unbelievable uh, that, uh, that we're in the place we are right now with a whole care system and a long-term care system that doesn't provide dignity, doesn't provide choice, doesn't provide uh, peace of mind for family members, uh, nor at, at all does it provide uh, the quality of care and the, uh, uh, you know, the type of care that people so, so deserve. Uh, people who have built our province and, uh, and built our communities. So I'm hoping that we can change that page. Uh, we can turn that page together and make those changes together. Uh, we all know there's an election next year, and I'm certainly hoping to become the, the premier that can start actually tackling uh, some of these issues with you. So let's continue to work together. Let's make sure our nurses get the support and the, the recognition uh, that they deserve, or that you deserve, uh, because that will bring Ontarians uh, the quality of care that they deserve. So thanks so much, everyone.